till they bring a wedding to on the Sunday of that week. The Wednesday, on the Wednesday, this brother, and his name is Ahmad, by the way, he called me on the Wednesday to sort of ask whether I could come to his wedding, uh, you know, say some dua, something like that. So, I got this. Right? Oh, like, yes, sir. You, do, you get your imam to do everything. Please, I will come just as uh, someone who will sit at the back. I said, oh, okay, okay, no, no, it's just, just, just to come and, uh, you know, memberiah uh, majlis, you know, as he would say in his own language. <clears throat> and then, you know, I, my hati was, I didn't want to go, I felt, oh, no, no, I'm so busy, do various other things on Sunday and on Saturday, you see, oh, no, 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 no. I'm and I tried to tell him as best as possible, you know, nature's finest gentleman, we're trying to live to that uh, uh, ideal. <clears throat> You know, we don't want to tell him, no, I cannot come. <laughs> this is the difficulty with the Malays, huh? you cannot say no. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. May Allah have mercy on us so. all. MashaAllah. Bila you dah start kerja nanti, when you start working, you know how, what I mean nanti. Uh, when you cannot say no, oh, once you start working, <laughs> you become humble <laughs> to someone. It's an important lesson there, a practical lesson there. You see, this is religious here, by the way. It has, it has practical significance to your life one day. Nevertheless, nevertheless. So I try my best to say no, but in the Malay style, which is kiasan and, you know, run about the way. And, you know, he still didn't get it, this Englishman. Very nice, you know. I said, okay, nah. I said, okay, yes, possibly I will consider it, but, I said, that I will, you know, and then you mentioned actually, you know, one of these enticements to get me to go to Birmingham was that, oh, uh, oh, he said, um, uh, that is, you know, Habib, you know, I mentioned earlier that the Habai brought Islam to Malaysia, and last month, uh, some of the two very famous Habib came to visit the United Kingdom, Habib Kazim, Asagaf, and Sheikh Omar al Khatib. Huh? Some people ask me, what's the difference between a Habib and a Sheikh? Makamne? What's the difference, in, you know, when you're a scholar, the difference between a Habib and a Sheikh? Uh, and the difference is, in the tradition of the Hadramo tradition, is that both of them are ulama. Both of them are Sheikh. We call Ustad. Both of them are Ustad. Huh? Both of them are top guru. The guru or Ustad or whatever, right? And the definition of Ustad or Sheikh or ulama is that Man balaga rutba ahl al fadl those who have reached the level of respectful, respectable in society in terms of you have reached that point of you know, knowledge that people respect you basically. So that means even your local imam is, your, is a sheikh, a staff. You must give him due respect. Don't forget. Even your local imam. But then just because your local imam is a sheikh or an ustaz does not mean that he can answer and give you answer on every matter of religion. Don't forget that, because a scholar, a Muslim scholar especially, has two things that you need to consider. One, his specialty. You have scholar in tafsir, you have scholar in hadith, you have scholar in fiqh, fiqh you have scholar in tasawwuf, you have scholar in usul, much like you have a scholar in pharmacology, a scholar in biochemistry, a scholar in uh, you know, ENT and so on and so forth, all the various specialty. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مِنَّا إِلَّا لَهُ مَا قَوْمٌ مَعْلُونَ Every one of us has its appointed place already. So whether you like it or not, if this scholar is a mufassir, he's a mufassir. So uh, if this scholar is a muhaddis, he's a muhaddis. And this scholar may be both a mufassir and a muhaddis and a faqih as well. A scholar in law. But then, if you want to ask a fatwa, which is, you know, nak minta soal uh, jawab agama, Tanya, boleh buat ni ke, boleh buat tu ke, tak boleh buat ni ke, boleh buat tu ke, haram buat ni ke, haram buat tu ke, halal buat ni ke, harus buat tu ke, and so on and so forth. Who do you ask? Who do you call? The, taf- the mufassir, the muhaddith or the faqih? The faqih, of course. The scholar who is a specialty in sharia, in Islamic law. Not the mufassir, not the muhaddith. The muhaddith specialty is only in hadith. Being able to tell whether this hadith is sahih, this hadith is hasan, this hadith is da'il. So, they have their own specialty. So just because your local imam is a sheikh and ustaz and so on, just, you know, and then it, obviously you respect him, but sometimes, sometimes you may have a difficult question, then 
sometimes you should not take it too seriously if he gives you an answer which you probably know is wrong, for example, because this is not his specialty. That's one thing about scholars that you should know. Yes, they are ulama, they are sheikh, they are imam, they are ustad, but they have their specialties. Don't forget that. Put them in their right context. Secondly, every alim, every faqih, for example, every muhaddith, each muhaddith, a scholar whose specialty is in hadith, is of different level. وَفَوْكَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Above every uh, one who is uh, intelligent, so who was our intelligent person, you know, Harith, you know, for example, please, living the, there is someone more intelligent than him, his teacher. So, a muhaddith at the level of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, for example, huh, will have someone higher than him or someone lower than him. So, even if you're in a specialty, a given specialty, people are of different levels. This we might need to be aware of. So, having said that, so the difference between the Habib and the Shaykh is that the Habib and the Shaykh are the same. They're both considered ulama. They have reached the level of what we would call an alim. That means that the ijaza, he has studied for 10, 20 years, uh, and is a specialist of the religion in one or field or another. But the difference between the Habib and the Shaykh is that the Habib is from the family of the Prophet sallallahu Whereas the Shaykh, the Ustaz, the one who is not from the family of the Prophet sallallahu is just called a Shaykh. That's why in our country, in our context in the Nusantara, we call, and even in the Hadramaut, for example, what about, uh, what about those people who are from the family of the Prophet, Ahli Bayt, but they are not ulama? What do you call them? Sayyid, yes, and Sayyida, yeah, Sayyid and Sharifa, yeah, exactly. They are not ulama, but they are Sayyid. Mm. So uh, that is the degree of that. Anyway, so the two famous. All right, let me fast forward, finish it off. Very sorry. <laughs> uh, wrap this up now. So these two famous uh, sheikhs, uh, Habib Kazim and Sheikh Omar. Al Khatib uh, was visiting the United Kingdom. He was, you know, going to lectures, masjid masjid, and having marhaban marhaban, everything, you know, maulid maulid, and so on and so forth. Uh, and on and, and this our brother Ahmad said, "Oh, you know, uh, this Saturday we are going to have Habib Kazim and Shia Omar in Birmingham. Oh, surely you would like to. Surely you would want to meet them, and you could come, and we could make arrangements for you to stay overnight in uh, Birmingham, uh, and and you know, you know, because they're going to go to the biggest mosque in Birmingham, the 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 cent- Birmingham Central Mosque, the Gamkul Sharif, you know. So, uh, you know, Imam Abu I actually had in mind because you see, I've heard so much of uh, Shia Omar al Khatib in particular because in our lands, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, to a certain extent, because not many, unfortunately, in Malaysia really know this. But in Indonesia in particular, and among the ulama, oh, the Shia Omar has a high reputation of being a faqih, mudaki, a very good lawyer in Islamic law, very good, uh, very good, very good uh, jurist, yeah? very, very good jurist. Oh, uh, you know, you know, I, 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 one of my area of interest is also a bit on Islamic law, you know, that is, also, that is not my professional subject, my professional subject at university is theology and philosophy, but I do have... Uh, not a state, but an interest in it. And so I thought, oh, it would be nice, yes, to see him, but... Oh, but I'm very sorry, Brother Ahmad. Uh, the, you know, I have an event in Sheffield on the Saturday. So I, you know, I really, you know, really can't... Okay, and then he was pushing, he was pushing, still doesn't get the point of all the things, you know, in the world. You know, this Englishman, no wonder they managed to conquer half of the world, huh? <laughs> so, I, I then... I, you know, strike a compromise with him. And I say, okay. You know, in my tradition, I say, if you're getting married, and since, you know, technically, well, obviously you're not my friend, I cannot call you the day before. You know, he's going to be the sultan, raja of the day. He's going to be the sultan of the day. So I can't call you the day before, nor can I call you the day during, and not the month after. Until then I can get in touch with you. Therefore, I said, okay, if something were to happen or something like that, okay, man, I was just, for me, this was just rhetorical, by the way, I was just saying this to get myself out of uh, trouble. 
So I, 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 you know, I said, okay, could you then please give me a phone number of one of your friends so that if I do 